para sa kanila. Mahalaga rin na magtulungan ang pribadong sektor, gobyerno, at mga civil society organizations upang mapagtagumpayan natin ang pagsupo sa COVID-19. Kaya naman noong Marso, ipinasapo ng Kongreso ang Republic Act No. 11469 o ang Bayanihan to Heal as One Act at binigyan ng ating Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte ng kapangyarihan na gumamit ng temporary emergency measures upang tugunan ang health emergency, iwasan ang malalang epekto nito at masuportahan ang pangangailangan ng taong bayan. Marami na po tayong nagawa. Kaya naman, hayaan nyo na aking maibahagi sa inyo ang ilan sa mga transparent, accountable at participatory initiatives ng ating pamahalaan laban sa COVID-19. We have continued to uphold budget transparency in our COVID-19 budget through proactive disclosure of the amounts augmented, reprogrammed, reallocated, and realigned to fund priority programs, activities, and projects being implemented in response to the pandemic. Sa ngayon, nakapagbigay na po tayo ng 374.89 billion pesos sa iba't ibang ahensya ng pamahalaan para suportahan ang kanilang mga programa laban sa COVID-19. Of all recipient agencies, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, received the largest share in the amount of 200.98 billion pesos for their social amelioration program, benefiting around 23 million low-income households in the country. Other agencies, such as the Department of Labor and Employment and the Department of Agriculture, received 12.59 billion and 11.10 billion, respectively, to support their programs for displaced formal and informal workers overseas Filipino workers and affected farmers and fisher folks. We also provided a budget of 51 billion for the small business rate subsidy program, which aimed to benefit affected micro, medium, and small enterprises or MSMEs through the Department of Finance. To support the country's healthcare capacity, the Department of Health received an allotment of 48.23 billion to fund the agency's immediate and continued COVID-19 response programs, as well as for the procurement of test kits and PPEs. 37.5 billion was released as biennial grants to provinces, cities, and municipalities, and of this amount, 7.6 billion were already liquidated by 386 local government units. Part of the liquidated 54.24% went to food assistance and other relief goods for affected households, followed by procurement of hospital equipment and supplies at 9.63%, and other COVID-19 related PPAs and expenses at 8%. The Department of Education also received $10.91 billion for its Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan or BELCP program, which aims to ensure educational continuity in this time of crisis by adopting multiple learning delivery modes, such as distance learning and blended learning among others, while ensuring the health, safety, and welfare of all learners, teachers, and personnel. The remaining 2.58 billion was released to other agencies, including the Department of Science and Technology, Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Foreign Affairs, and the Department of Interior and Local Government, among others. Aside from upholding budget transparency, the executive branch also publishes and submits 
a weekly biannual report to the Joint Congressional Oversight Committee, which contains updates on government initiatives being maintained or implemented pursuant to the Bayanihan Law. Maliban sa pagsisiguro na transparent po tayo sa ating COVID-19 budget, meron din pong initiatives ang gobyerno kung saan mas pinadali natin ang access sa mga programa at proyekto ng pamahalaan. The Presidential Communications Operations Office, or PCOO, created an official COVID-19 response website, covid19.government.ph, which serves as a one-stop shop for basic comprehensive information about the COVID-19 pandemic and the initiatives of the national government to address its impact. The Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, imposed a price freeze on basic necessities and prime commodities established the COVID-19 Rapid Response Team to answer queries and facilitate movement of cargoes among quarantine control points. The agency also conducted 818 Kadiwa Descuento caravans to make products more accessible to consumers in 2,974 barangays, benefiting 272,837 households even amid the lockdown restrictions. DTI also brought its services down to the barangay level through the livelihood seeding program, negotiations of vicious barangay, benefiting 632 barangays and 4,824 MSMEs. Apart from the proactive response of various implementing agencies, it is also important for the government to provide a platform for citizens to give their feedback and in turn be able to have a holistic understanding of the situation. The PCOO, together with the Office of the Presidential Spokesperson, OPS, conducts daily press briefings with the Malacanang Press Corps to allow the public to ask questions and seek clarifications directly from government officials regarding COVID-19 measures. The National Economic and Development Authority also conducted online public surveys to rapidly assess the impact of the pandemic and of the enhanced community quarantine imposed in the country. The National Anti-Poverty Commission engaged 46 basic sectors and Kasambayanihan volunteers to ensure that government assistance reaches those who are in need during the pandemic. Let me also share with you other accomplishments under the BGC Roadmap, which aims to create more spaces for public dialogue and response, as well as to provide adequate resources for building capacity. The government pushed transparency and citizen engagement to its peak through the Freedom of Information program where more than 22,843 requests from the public were submitted. Out of all these requests, 49% or 11,162 were completely acted upon as of May 2020. There were also efforts to localize the FOI program and as of date, about 25 local government units have already passed their local FOI ordinances. On another front, our participatory governance initiatives are also making waves at the international level. Out of 117 countries evaluated for the 2019 open budget survey, the Philippines secured the top spot in Southeast Asia for budget transparency, making us the most fiscally transparent country in the region while ranking 10th place worldwide. This implies that we were able to make budget information publicly available in a comprehensive and timely manner through the publication of all eight key budget documents, such as the enacted budget 
and the citizens' budget, among others. The Philippines is also the only country in the world where citizens are part of the auditing team. This is being done through the Citizen Partic Participatory Audit Program of the Commission on Audit. The CPA program was expanded to include implementation validation of audit recommendations by COA and CSO representatives. The Commission also conducted six CPA dialogues and engagements in 2019. Because of all these efforts, the Philippines remains to be recognized as a global leader in the open government space and in our experiences that are continuously being shared and cited in various global and regional platforms such as the Open Government Partnership, Global Initiative for Fiscal Transparency, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, among others. Ang lahat po ng ito ay nagawa ng gobyerno dahil na rin sa tulong ng iba't ibang grupo at organisasyon na marapat lamang na ating pasalamatan. Let me therefore also acknowledge the contributions made by the private sector, the civil society organizations, people's organizations, our development partners, the academy, media, and by the citizens themselves in this fight against COVID-19. Even with all these initiatives and accomplishments though, President Duterte highlighted the challenges we continue to face time and again. And these are one, improving frontline service delivery, two, building open and responsive public institutions, and three, increasing mechanisms for information dissemination. That is why for our future directions, we aim to undertake a more strategic and convergent approach in promoting participatory governance through the revision and enhancement of the clusters, programs, and projects under the PGC roadmap. Moreover, bulk of the fiscal year 2021 budget will be reprioritized towards saving lives and protecting communities while making our economy stronger and more agile by further buttressing the healthcare system, ensuring food security, and enabling digital government economy as well as helping communities to adjust to the new normal. Given the risks and the unknowns we face during this pandemic, we acknowledge that so much more needs to be done. At para po patuloy nating malabanan ng COVID-19, kailangan po ng gobyerno ang tulong ninyo. Through a much stronger and genuine participation and partnership with our citizens, we at the Participatory Governance Cluster of the Cabinet will take more concrete action steps to ensure that the government remains transparent and efficient in response to the needs of our citizens during this critical period. Since at the end of the day, what matters most for our citizens is to know and to reveal really that the government is there for them, we will deliver efficient and effective public services, listen and respond and serve and protect and give the most that the government can. Uulitin ko po, nandito lang ang gobyerno na handang mapinig at damayan kayo at higit sa lahat, ipadama ang patuloy na pagkalinga para sa inyo. Tayo po ay magtulungan na labanan ang COVID-19. And with the love, mercy, and compassion of our Almighty God, we shall overcome.